What just happened on EastEnders? <laughs> oh, what just happened on EastEnders? We had a piece of small group, apparently improvised acting, and then a bizarre flash forward to Christmas 2023. They've never done that before. It was almost like watching a drama GCSE project with basic hot seating. Oh, sorry, that's a bit hurtful, isn't it? Can I suggest if the script writers are going to go down this route, they look at some really, really um, good group acting pieces. Can I suggest, for instance, Dancing at Lunasa by Brian Friel? Um, a fantastic blend of comedy, tragedy, um, strong individual characters. It was bizarre. I enjoyed it. I like a change. It's good to see the characters from a different perspective. Um, but it was bizarre. <laughs> I don't think Shirley would have gone to see her rapist son by any stretch of the imagination. Just wasn't an authentic believable storyline that she had if she was going to do anything I would say she would have gone to run a bar in Benidorm or something like that I really don't think she'd have gone to see Dean especially after the way that he betrayed Mick in the way that he did it's, it's just not feasible oh. I tell you what else wasn't believable was that Sharon would have been betrayed, portrayed, sorry, betrayed, sorry, by Linda. I don't think Linda would ever, ever betray Sharon. It would certainly see through uh, Rish, because she'd have heard all sorts in the, overheard all sorts in the pub about him, and she wouldn't, of wanting to go into business with him at all. I, I just can't believe that she would. I also didn't believe that Denise, given half the chance, wouldn't have had a naughty little session with her toy boy that she's desperate to cheat on with Jack tonight. I think tonight may have been the night where she would have done the deed, to be honest. Oh, just saying. <laughs> Over the years, I've desperately invested in EastEnders. I feel like I know the characters inside out and back to front. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened to the, the characters and the narrative this evening. Um, it, it took an interesting... Turn. I don't know whether ratings are down or something and they were trying to flip it and give it a new lease of life. I suppose everybody's talking about that episode tonight, aren't they? Everybody's talking about EastEnders, which is exactly what they wanted. So maybe that's what they wanted. But was it a good episode? Were the narratives believable? Hmm. I'm on the fence. The there from Dung's effect, the alienation effect offered by EastEnders last night, whereby we get a flash forward to Christmas 2023, where the actresses wear stylized costumes, whereby they represent the colours of the rainbow. Are we moving away from the realism, emotionally invested kitchen sink domestic drama and moving into a context whereby we observe the situations and can view them from a non-emotional point of view? Are we also saying that we're trying to empower the actresses small baby steps to start off with, whereby they are given more of an authorial voice? There was a sense that the script was almost a improvisation workshop that had been written up into a script. Is there an intention to empower the actresses more? We've seen throughout history how women are merely factory products, puppets, if you like, of the, the factory business that is TV. Is this a step towards empowerment? 
<laughs> I've got it. I finally got it. Everybody is talking about the episode. Am I right? Now, the Who Shot Phil Mitchell episode, got millions and millions of views. Is this a fresh approach to try and secure more Twitters and TikToks and social media referencing to EastEnders to get everybody talking about it on the social media sites? Well, that's certainly happening for good or for bad. Everybody's talking about EastEnders. Personally, though, as an Uber fan, I don't like to have spoilers. I don't want to know who's going to be on EastEnders at Christmas. We're only February now.